I've been rocking the brand new iPhone 14 Pro Max for the past 24 hours, and I've been able to narrow down if you should upgrade into two categories. Things you'll notice and things you just won't care about. For me, I've only been able to notice about three things, and that is the brand new Dynamic Island, the always on display, and I've also been able to partially notice the new camera improvements. The Dynamic Island is a brand new way that you can interact with your iPhone. It allows you to look at music, timers, navigation, and also take phone calls without having your whole phone be absorbed with the incoming call notification. It's supposed to be a seamless way for you to interact with your iPhone, and it's been pretty great, but I don't really notice it. Now, this is a weird thing, and I really haven't heard a lot of iPhone reviewers talk about this, but it honestly just blends into the background. It's not as flashy as the advertisements showed it off to be. And I'm coming from an iPhone 13 Pro, and prior to that, I had the iPhone 12 Pro, so I'm used to having a notch. And this kind of just looks like the notch to me. There's a thin sliver of screen real estate right above the notch, and while you're watching movies or while you're just on your phone, if there's anything dark above it, it just like blends in, and it doesn't look like anything. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I feel like the Dynamic Island should have been a little bit more flashy. It's a little too subtle, I think. Just, it doesn't, it doesn't really separate it from iPhones from prior generations. Like, doesn't that just look just like a, like a notch a little bit? And my wallpaper is also darkened right now, so that's kind of why. But for me, at least, it just doesn't look that noticeable. Maybe that's what they're going for, but from what it, the advertisements look like, it just kind of looks like they really want people to have it really different and fancy, but it's, it's not that different. Now, the always on screen is, is trippy. As a core iPhone user, this has never been a feature Apple's had, and the always on display is just confusing. Now, now look at this. Does this phone look like it's off right now. <laughs> That's what it looks like when it's on. It's just, it's weird. And I don't think I like it. And I think it's something I'm gonna turn off. It's just something that's like a pet peeve for me. I just like when my electronics are off. I don't like when they're always on, but I wanted to challenge myself by enabling it for the next couple days and maybe I'll get used to it. And Apple kind of made this more difficult than they should have. They don't really add any customizations for the always on display screen. It's only a toggle to turn it on and turn it off. I wish there was a way you could possibly do a different wallpaper that's more energy efficient, that's even darker than the one they have. And also maybe some other ways to indicate that it's completely turned off because over the course of 24 hours, I probably turned my phone on a hundred times uh, and I've just hit the power button to make sure that it's turned off because when it's sitting there, it doesn't always look like it's turned off. This might be in fact, since I was using a privacy screen on my earlier phone, on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. And with the privacy screen, it kind of makes the screen look a little bit darker than normal. So maybe that's why it's tripping me up so much, but it's just something I'm not really used to and I don't think I'll be keeping. Hopefully Apple can do changes like that. I know they're not really big on making changes like that, but who knows, maybe in the next couple iOS updates, they'll allow the screen to be changed a little bit. With the new camera, I didn't really take that many photos with it, but I did take it to a Brewers baseball game and I was at the top of the stadium and I took some cool photos and some zoomed in photos and videos and it actually didn't look that bad. I'm really excited for this because I do take a lot of photos, but I, I've honestly noticed that ever since the iPhone 12, all of my online digital photos just look about the same. There isn't that much enhancement. And anytime I open up any of my iPhone photos in Lightroom and edit anything, it just always makes the photos look a little bit grainy and a little over sharpened. And that just has to do with the iPhone sensor. I haven't really edited any of these photos, but I might be doing that in the near future to test that out. One small thing that I did notice is I did use the wide lens on my iPhone 13 Pro Max before I got rid of it. I took a photo of a praying mantis and the photo size was only 1.9 megabytes. And I just took a wide lens photo with this new phone and the file size was 2.4 megabytes. So I don't know if there's some sort of different compression or something, but I have to assume that the larger sensor on this iPhone 14 Pro Max, the one that's 48 megapixels, I assume the image has to be bigger just because you're absorbing so much more detail and so much more information. That's something to look at. I also got like the, the 256 version of this phone instead of the other one that I've, I've usually do. Even though I have two terabytes of storage on iCloud, I just didn't want my phone running out of storage. Now let's talk about things that I did not notice. I did not notice the car crash crash detection, the satellite connectivity, the A16 bionic chip, and I also did not notice the thinner borders. Let's start with the borders. Since I always use a phone case, I just don't really notice my phone borders anymore and it's not that big of an improvement. Even if they were ultra thin, I think I'd still have a case to protect it. And that's why I don't I don't really notice it. <laughs> and the A16 bionic, I don't really notice any speed differences. My iPhone 13 Pro Max was lightning fast and I never had leg with it. So I don't think it could get much worse with, with a newer chip. Uh, I haven't really been in a car crash or in the middle of the woods. So I haven't been able to test the satellite connectivity or the car crash detection. So those two features are nice to have and always have in the back of the mind, but it'll be interesting to see how much the satellite connectivity costs. When you purchase a new phone, you get it for two years for free, but I think they're rolling it out in November and then you'll be able to test it. But yeah, those are just things you don't really notice. And also the eSIM. I know a lot of people have been talking about the eSIM saying how horrible it is that they got rid of the SIM card tray. Honestly, I think as an average phone user that doesn't have multiple SIMs, and even though I do travel, my carrier just like lets you use 
different different networks. So that's why I'm not like super concerned about the new eSIM. Honestly, transferring all my data over was seamless. So that's why I'm not very annoyed about that. So now, now it boils down to if you should actually upgrade if you have a 13 or even a 12 Pro. And honestly, I, I don't think it's worth it for the average person. Honestly, I didn't even think it was worth it for me, but I knew I'd be making some videos on it and that's kind of why I got it. But other than that, it's not it's not really that big of a difference. Now I know they keep pushing the camera, saying the iPhone camera is the best, the, the greatest. I haven't noticed any changes since my 12. I just feel like all the photos are always just good when I share them with my family, when I post them on my stories and stuff, they're just always crisp and they always look good and I'm never really worried about the photo. And I don't think I'll ever really wanna shoot an Apple ProRes RAW on this iPhone just because I have a Sony a7 like if you really like editing images and taking images like that I just recommend you investing in a, in a full frame camera you'll not only be able to get a larger sensor which is almost impossible to have on an iPhone you will have like a one inch sensor you'll also be able to have interchangeable lenses you can also take better raw photos and then edit them yourself I just trust the iPhone with taking good photos and posting them if I really want to edit them and make them more artistic I just use my big camera and I know you might say that's a luxury to have a big camera but honestly the, the amount of money that you'll be spending every year to upgrade, you could just buy a, a better camera. It's definitely nice to not have to worry about taking photos, but at the end of the day, if I really want a solid photo, I just use a bigger camera and a camera that's meant for, you know, the, the type of photos I wanna take. But if you are reckless and you do go out in the woods and you never have your cellular data, then the satellite connectivity and the car crash detection could be for you. I am neither of those people, so I don't really need it, but it's nice to have just in case something happens. But that is not a reason to upgrade all on its own. You could just get a new Apple Watch with the car crash detection, and I never really go away from cell towers, if that makes sense. But if you are a massive iPhone fan and you're like me, I went to Cupertino, got this shirt, and you really want a brand new iPhone, yeah, sure, go for it. If you have the income and you can just spend it, I, I'd recommend it for that. But if you're just a normal user and you don't really care about always having to have the newest thing, or if you're that big of an Apple fan and you don't want to try these things out, I wouldn't really recommend it. I'm sure next year they're going to have some extra features that make it a little bit more enticing, but I just feel like this change is a little bit more minimal. And they had to switch it up with the dynamic island because without it, I don't think anyone would really upgrade. <laughs> the camera features are nice, but again, you know, just switch to a full frame camera or a different camera. That is my little uh, comparison. And if you should upgrade, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Take it easy. Peace.